thankful to know him, to have that freedom to walk in liberty. We're going to go to him in prayer this morning. If you're able to stand and not, we ask that you do so. We want to pray for Carol Blackford, suffering with physical uh, illness and needs a touch from the Lord. We want to pray for uh, a lady by the name of LaFonda Minyard. For those of you who remember Sister Violet, this is her sister's going to have open heart surgery. So LaFania Minard needs a uh, touch from the Lord. We want to pray for the family of Katrina Carter. They lost a fem family member, it's a friend, a sister, Tiffany's. So let's lift that family up this morning. We want to pray for Brother John Lease. He's still struggling with that kidney stone. He's going on two weeks now. I'm going to have to surgically go in and do something. So pray for Brother John. Continue to pray for Sister Simone. Um, she is here, but she's still having the pain. They've ruled out some things. 
still have some more testing to do, so pray for her this morning. And then we want to lift up Sister Kathy Morale. She her sister, Diane, just passed away this morning. So we know God, the Holy Ghost is a comforter. And she needs the comforter this morning and needs the peace of God to surround her. So we know he is more, he's living this morning and he is able to do that. So we're going to go to him in prayer. If you have an unspoken need by hand lifted in faith this morning. Let's go to the living God this morning with these needs. Father, we're lifting our hands and our hearts and our voices in faith this morning. Asking God that you would touch those in need of a physical touch. Father, you're the creator of everybody. You're the great physician. We're asking your anointing. We're asking your covering. We're asking your will to be done in the physical bodies this morning. Father, I pray for those in the valley of grief those that are walking in the valley of loss this morning. Father, surround them with your peace. Surround them with the comfort of your spirit. Father, let them feel the Shekinah glory as they walk through that valley. I pray for every unspoken need represented this morning. Father, you know the need. You know the situation. You know the heaviness of heart. I pray to you this morning, God, as the living God, you are able to meet and move in each need. I pray you for this morning, giving you the glory, giving you the honor, giving you the praise for it in advance. Thanking you, Jesus. Thanking you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And let the church say in Jesus' name, amen, and you may be seated. At this time, tomorrow is a holiday that the nation's going to celebrate, and we do not want to let that holiday bypass the church also celebrating. So if Brother Gardner would come. Hallelujah. Thank you, church, for being here today. We want to take time out to celebrate and honor our veterans. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, an armistice was declared between the Allied Nations and Germany. Ending World War I. In 1926, Congress recognized this day as the official end of World War I and named it Armistice Day. In 1938, it became a national holiday, honoring the World War I veterans. On June 1st, 1954, the commemoration was amended, changing the name from Armistice to Veterans to honor all veterans. So for Veterans Day, we honor them who honored us with their service. Amen. Yes. And we have a great group of veterans here that were soldiers and served this country. But they're also soldiers of the Lord. And at this time, I want to recognize those veterans. We ask that you would come forth because we want to honor you. We're going to say a prayer over you. So when I call your name, if you could come forward and be recognized by, by this church. Amen. Sister Paula Howard, Army. Brother Rex Howard, Army. Brother Ralph Jones, Army. Brother Jim Blackford, Army. Brother Corky Nunnemaker, Army. Brother Rob Brainerd, Army. Brother John France, Army. Brother Tyler Himes, Army. Brother Co 
Jody Neese, Army. The Randy Etheridge, Army. Brother Mark Robinson, Army. Brother Lawrence Abramovich, Air Force. Brother Jordan Brainerd, Army. Brother Michael Line, Navy. Brother Michael Fugate, National Guard. Brother Bernie Begley, Air Force. At this time, if there are any other veterans and your name was not called, we invite you to come forward at this time. We're going to say a prayer. If you guys can, if church, if we can bow our heads, I'm going to read a prayer here for our veterans. Hallelujah. We can all stand and bow. Almighty God, we give you thanks today for our nation's veterans. We honor them for their faithful service in defending and preserving our freedom. We are grateful to those who served during times of peace, standing ready, bravely awaiting their call to duty. We are grateful for, to those who served during times of unrest, enduring conflict, and bearing the physical and spiritual wounds of war. We ask that you bless them, heal their wounds, and give them peace. We thank you, God, for all of our veterans, those of generations past and present. May we never forget what our country has asked of them and what they have given in return. Amen. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Amen. I just want to read a couple quotes before we finish. Never was so much owed by so many to so few. Winston Churchill. The soldier above all others prays for peace, for it is the soldier who must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and scars of war. Douglas MacArthur. Our debt to the heroic men and women in the service of our country can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. Harry S. Truman. At this time, church, can we celebrate these veterans of the United States? Hallelujah. They were not only soldiers, but they are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are thankful for these men and women who have served. God bless you and God bless the United States. <laughs> you may be seated. thankful for the United States. I am thankful. It's not a perfect nation, but it's our nation. I'm thankful for people who volunteered or were drafted and committed and did their job so that we can come and worship in freedom and liberty. Got a, a few announcements for this upcoming week got our normal activities on Tuesday and Wednesday. Then on Thursday, Golden Pillars, your Christmas banquet will be happening in the basement at 6. There's information in the uh, bulletin. It's out there on the entryway, so if you want to find out more about that. And then Friday, you have a youth night. That doesn't make sense. Youth, you have an outing on Friday at 6. So youth come, come to the church at 6 for a, an outing and some food, fun, and fellowship. 
We're going to take up our offering at this time. Give generously to them and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to. Let's pray over this tithe and offering. Father, we are so appreciative of how you've blessed our lives, how you've moved within us. We ask that you would anoint this tithe and offering as we give with a heart of willingness, of appreciation, of thankfulness. Anoint and touch it. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing about Jesus, sing about his goodness and all he's done. I will sing, I'll sing about Jesus, sing about his mercy, I can now run. And I will testify with my hands lifted high, I'll sing, I'll sing about Jesus. Where I am now, oh, I see how He brought me out. His grace that now defines me is what rewrites my story. This is my testimony. I will sing. I'll sing about Jesus. Sing about His goodness and all He's done. I will sing, I'll sing about Jesus, sing about his mercy, I can now run. I will testify with my hands lifted high, I'll sing, I'll sing about Jesus. When I look at where I am now, oh, I see how Sing about Jesus, sing about his mercy, I can now run. I will testify with my hands lifted high, I'll sing, I'll sing about Jesus. He brought me out of my sorrow, he brought me out of my shame, he brought me out of my mourning, I'm dead. Again. He brought me out of my worry, he brought me out of my pain, he brought me out of my sadness, I'm laughing again. He brought me out of my sorrow, he brought me out of my shame, he brought me out of my mourning, I'm dancing again. He brought me out of my worry, he brought me out of my pain, he brought me out of my sadness, I'm laughing again. Jesus, sing about his mercy, I can now run. I will testify with my hands lifted high, I'll sing, I'll sing about Jesus.
brought me out of my sorrow. He brought me out of my shame. He brought me out of my mourning. I'm dancing again. He brought me out of my worry. He brought me out of my pain. He brought me out of my sadness. I'm laughing again. He brought me out of my sorrow. Brought me out of my shame. He brought me out of my mourning. I'm dancing again. He brought me out of my worry. He broke me out of depression, I'm shouting again. And I will sing, I'll sing about Jesus, sing about his goodness and all he's done. I will sing, I'll sing about Jesus, sing about his mercy, I can now run. I will testify with my hands lifted high. I'll sing, I'll sing about Jesus. Set free. In the name of Jesus, I have victory. 
you believe that God has broken those chains and set you free this morning? Why don't we get up and give him some praise for our freedom to worship him? Here we go. Somebody say, I've been redeemed. I've been set free. In the name of Jesus, I have victory. Sing it again. Say, I've been redeemed. I've been set free. In the name of Jesus, I have victory. Somebody say,
Clap our hands and praise Him this morning. He is worthy. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is our name in all the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Will everybody say praise the Lord? Praise God. Amen. I, too, want to express my heartfelt thanks for all of our veterans and uh, I love to read and pay attention to and study war, the different wars. I don't know why it appeals to me, but to understand war is a um, complex thing. And uh, people that volunteer, and many people that were drafted and uh, had to go serve, and many countries in our world where when the young people come out of high school, they have to go serve for a couple years. Amen. There's a lot to be said about that. So we appreciate our veterans. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's right. In Psalms, the 34th chapter, we have a psalm here of David talking about a time when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who in turn drove him away, and uh, he left, he departed. And so we have this psalm here that I want to read in chapter 34, verses 1 through 10, to begin our time together this morning. 
And David begins, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Turn your neighbor and say, he can deliver you from your fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. Translation of that for better understanding of the scripture just simply means they flowed unto him. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want of them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Everybody say praise the Lord to the reading of the word. In the scripture, we probably read it many times. I know I have. Or I have extrapolated a scripture or one of the verses out of that. And uh, I will quote it. I think about it. And probably most of us at off times. But there's one thing that I can say about what David is trying to get across here. I believe for us is the fact that we can't lose sight of who our Redeemer is. Sometimes when all the chaos is going on around us, we just need to take a closer look. Because He's right there by our side. He's ever-present. Doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now, He's an ever-present God. Amen. So let's pray together and ask God to bless us here for the next little bit. Lord God, we thank You. Amen. For your goodness, mercy, your loving kindness that you so graciously shown to us. And with all the troubles in the world today, one could look and say, is there any hope? Amen. But your scripture tells us that if we look unto you, you are truly the author and the finisher of the faith. You are our strength and our salvation. You are our help in a time of need. So I pray God today for the next little bit that you would bless your word and that your word would bless our hearts. And Lord God, that we could find ourselves in a place to where we know what it means to serve you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because truly you are ever near. And we thank you for that in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody say amen. Amen. One more time, would you clap your hands and praise God while you're being seated. God bless you. Verse 5. They looked into him and were lighted. Their faces were not ashamed. Another translation has it this way. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Those who go to him for help, one verse said, are happy, and they are never disgraced. When I was looking at this, I kind of realized the the fact that God is calling His people, us. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's you, that's me. I think God is taking taking us to a place where He says, look, I need you to take a closer look at me. Right? Like the old song, just a closer walk with thee. Every now and then you got to come to a place to where no matter, once again, what's going on around you or what's going on in your personal life, you got to stop for a moment and just focus in on the real reason, amen, that you are here, and that's to serve God. Jesus Christ must be the main focus in our lives as never before. And when we look to Him, we find that satisfaction that we have been looking for. You're not going to find it in the world. 
You're not going to find it in the pleasures of the world. You're not going to find it in all the things of the world. You're not going to find it in politics, folks. And you're not going to find it at your job or everywhere else. Those things are here for a moment. But your eternal soul is here forever. Take that closer look at Christ. David wrote this psalm during a time when Saul was trying to kill him. If you want to put it this way, Saul had put a warrant out for his life. And if you go back into the book of 1 Samuel and you begin to read the story of what was transpiring here in the 21st chapter, you will find that Jonathan had a dialogue, maybe it's the 20th chapter, with his father. He was wanting to know from his father, why are you so mad at David? Why do you want to kill him? Why are you so opposed to David? Amen. Well, we know prior scriptures what God was doing in David's life. And that God had brought David such a far way to where Saul was tired of hearing them sing the songs of, you know, David has killed his ten thousands and Saul's only killed his thousands. He was upset with that. And uh, you know the story uh, of Saul and how he failed in his quest to be what God really wanted him to be. And so now, this anointed young man by the name of David was running for his life. And his best friend, Jonathan, sitting there talking to his dad, trying to make sense of it. And his dad got so mad at him, the Bible says that he even threw a javelin at him. And would have smote him. And Jonathan got up and was angry at what was transpiring. But he knew then that David can't come back around. Because his father's intentions uh, was to kill him. And so you know the story where he took the lad out the field and he shot the arrows. And then David hit the ground. And and, and then him and Jonathan uh, come together for a moment. uh, And uh, uh, if I might put it this way, grieved because now David uh, was a wanted man. Saul was targeting him trying to destroy his life. Saul despised David. And therefore, David had to leave. And Jonathan had done his best to encourage David. Amen. Jonathan was doing his best to say, hey, everything's going to be all right. But somewhere inside of David, he knew, amen, that this was not a good situation that he was in. And so in 1 Samuel, it describes his encounter with Abimelech, the priest, and how that David was able to overcome. The Bible says in chapter 21 and verse 1, follow with me for a moment. Then came David to a place called Nob. To Ahimelech, the priest, Ahimelech was afraid of the meeting with David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech, the priest, The king hath commanded me a a business. Now, I'm reading this here, Brother Tyler, and, 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 and when you read long enough, you'll know that David was not telling the truth here. He was afraid. He was running for his life. They were hungry. They needed weapons. He didn't have any weapons, but let me read on. Amen. The king uh, commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand, Ahimelech? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what there is present. And the priest said to David, uh, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least uh, from women. And David answered the king and said to him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us uh, about these three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy, uh, and the bread is in a manner of common. uh, Yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessels. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord. His name was Doeg. He was an Edomite. Doeg was listening to the conversation. Doeg was watching what was going on. Doeg was not a friend of David. 
Doeg was not a friend of the priest because he goes and tells. But the Bible said to him, David said to Ahimelech, And is there not under thine hand a, a spear or a sword? For I have neither bought my sword nor my weapons with me because the king's business required. He left so fast that he couldn't even get his weapons. The priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah. Behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take it, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. Now I reiterate, I go back in verse 9 where the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in cloth behind the ephod. Could I say that the priest told David, Behold your trophy. Behold your trophy. Can I say today that the priest uh, Could he be telling David to take a closer look at your past victory? No matter what your circumstance is right now, David, this is something that is valuable to you. Because when you went into the valley of Elah and you smote Goliath, you took this sword and you took his head with his sword. This is something, if you will look at, it will remind you of the victory that God allowed you to have have on the battlefield in the valley of Elah when the Philistines were destroyed. David understood that he needed the right tools for that job. When he saw Goliath's sword, he did not even hesitate to take it for his own use. And there's one thing that I notice here. What what is often missing in, in many of our lives? Seeing the kingdom of God as being the most important thing and acting on the principles. There's nothing more important than that. David didn't act upon what he knew to be true, yet he sought God in spite of every bit of opposition to do so. I'm here to tell you this morning that if you think that you can fight this battle on your own, amen, you will not be able to do that. Amen. You will not be able to fight this battle against this enemy on your own. You must find your place with God and take a closer look and realize where your strength comes from, where your power comes from, amen, where your deliverance comes from. Amen. Where you help, it comes from Him. Come on, let's clap our hands and praise Him. Hallelujah. David didn't act upon what he knew to be true. He sought God in spite of every bit of opposition. Let me say it again. He knew that Saul wanted to destroy him. He had to run. In this series of stories, you will find him ending up in the cave of Adullam. You'll find him running for his life. You'll find men coming to him, uh, amen, and and banding together with him. But yet they were all fearful of what the end would be, uh, amen. What they needed uh, is what they finally got when David was able, amen, to get a hold of a sword uh, that would remind him of a past victory uh, and what God had anointed him, uh, amen, to become. He got a hold uh, of the vision. He got a hold uh, of God's promise. He got a hold uh, of what God intended for him. How? By going back and understand the power of God through an old testimony uh, that he got a hold of uh, of look what the Lord uh, hath done. Testimonies are powerful. I don't know where you come from, uh, but I probably believe in myself today uh, And when I say this, uh, that everybody has some kind of a testimony. uh, And no matter where you get, uh, get a hold of that testimony. uh, Amen. Go back and get a hold of it uh, and let let it remind you of the power and the awesomeness of God. It's time to take a closer look, not just at what we believe, but into the face of whom we believe in. Too many people today got their eyes on other stuff. 
Too many people today got their eyes on, on the things around them and, 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 the, and the glint and the glitter uh, of, 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 of those things that are just kind of shining around. Uh, and we're getting our eyes all on that and we're forgetting where, amen, our eyes need to be. I'm telling you this morning, take a closer work at, look at Jesus. Uh, amen. Look into his face. Uh, amen. Believe in him. Uh, because, folks, when it's all said and done, uh, that is the only thing that's going to matter. Amen. It's the only thing that's going to matter. Amen. Only thing that's going to matter is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what makes a difference in us. Take that closer look. Look unto Him. Amen. Which our strength comes from. Because, let me say it this way. If we behold Him, we will worship Him. If I get my eyes on Him, I will worship Him. I won't worship the world. I won't worship the things of the world. My eyes aren't on the world. My eyes are on Him. Amen. You are going to worship what you are glazing at. You're going to worship what you're looking at. You're going to worship, amen, what's got your attention. Amen. But I'm here today. Redirect your attention to Jesus Christ because if you will behold Him, you will worship Him. And if we worship Him, hear me today, if we worship Him, we will adore Him. And if we adore Him, we will appreciate Him. Oh, come on, somebody say praise the Lord. If we appreciate Him, we will raise, uh, it will raise us up to uh, effective heights uh, that will last uh, for all of eternity. Uh, oh, hear me today when I tell you this. Uh, we live in this world, but we are not of this world. Uh, amen. We got a God that's going to come back for us uh, and take us out of this world. Uh, he has a place prepared for us. Uh, amen. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Do we still believe in that today? Uh, amen. Do we still believe that there is a heaven? Uh, do we still believe that He went there? Uh, Amen. To prepare it for us. If you believe that, clap your hands and praise him this morning. It's through that relationship of appreciation that he will raise you up out of your dilemma. Amen. Notice we will not go where we did not first gaze. Amen. Amen. There's some things I looked at, Brother Howard, and it wasn't worth the second look. There's some things you look at, it just don't grab your attention. Amen. There's a lot of things I look at, and I'm just like, well, you know, nothing really there. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. You take me some places, and, and I look out here, and we've had all the no rain and everything. It gets parched, and it's all dry and dusty, and you look at that, and it really don't strike a chord. But then you let the rains and the dew and the moisture come and the grass starts greening and the, and the trees and the leaves and, 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 and come into fall and you see all the beautiful colors, that, amen, the handiwork of God. That's something that I'll look at and I'll say, look at the goodness of God. Look at the creative power of God. Down in the Smokies, going through the mountains at night, and you look up, Brother Tyler, and you see the wonder, wonderful working hand of God, and, and you just got to sit there and say, man, amen, what a creation that God created. Uh, what a great thing. Uh, amen. I, I, I want, when I look at something, uh, amen, I want it to have an impact on my life. Uh, and so I'm going to look at God, and I'm not going to look at Him uh, and just say, what can I get from you, God? Uh, I'm going to look at Him uh, with an appreciation, uh, amen, that says, thank you, Lord. Uh, Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity I have, uh, amen, to serve you. Thank you, Lord, uh, for forgiving me of my sin. Thank you, Lord, uh, amen, for giving me of my sin and uh, me bearing in your name and washing them away. Thank you, Lord, uh, for filling me with your spirit. If you want to go somewhere in God, you got to be willing to look at the place so hard and so long that no price is too high. To pay in your spirit. That's our problem nowadays, folk. Amen. We've lost the element of sacrifice. If it's sacrifice, many times we're not willing to pay it. If it's going to cost us something, we're not willing to pay it. If it begins to woo us into a higher place with God, and we look at the process and we say, 
I don't know that I'm willing to pay that process. I don't know about you today or not, but let me say, if you want to go again, if you want to go anywhere with God, something has to get in your spirit where you say, no price is too high. No mountain is too high. Amen. No valley is too low. No matter what I go through or what I have to go through, I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. Why? Because I know that's where my strength is. My help comes from. It might cost us time. It might cost us money. And God knows it'll cost us friends. It'll cost us leisure. It'll cost us hobbies. Amen. Just to be able to get there. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, no matter what it costs me, I'm going to get there. I'm going for it. Amen. I'm going to make heaven my home. Amen. I'm not going to be so entangled with the world. Amen. That tethers me to it. When God comes, I don't get one inch off the ground. But God help me to be become untethered, uh, amen, to this world, uh, to where when I hear that trumpet sound, uh, amen, I'm going to rise up out of here to be with him forever. Hear me, the destiny uh, is worth the journey. It's worth it. I have gotten to that place. Where when I go pick up my granddaughter from school, and mind you, it's only a 20 ride, 20 minute ride. And I pick her up from school and she'll say, Pappy, are we there yet? I'm like, oh, she's at that place now. <laughs> where she's going to ask, are we there yet? But you know, sometimes I think in our spirit, Glory. Amen. With everything that's going on, I'm like, are we there yet? I know we're not, but Lord, how far are we? <laughs> Lord, how far are we? How close is it? You know, have you ever felt that way before? You're praying and you say, God, man, there's just so much going on around me, so much going on. How, far, how close is it, Lord? I know you're not going to tell me the day or the hour. I understand that. Uh, amen. But Lord, I feel like we're in the season. Uh, and Lord, I feel like, you know, your presence is around us, Lord. I don't want to get away from that. I don't want to be away from the presence of God. I want to be there. Why? Because I know I'm on a journey. Uh, amen. I'm, I'm headed for a distinct place. Uh, I'm headed for a place that God has prepared for us. Uh, amen. I'm headed for a moment and a time uh, that the trump of God is going to say, I'm headed for a moment when he's going to rapture, uh, catch away his church. Uh, out of this world and I don't know about you but I plan on making it I don't know about you but I'm going to take a closer look at God I'm going to make it you know the funnest vacations you're ever going to take is when you know where you're going hello yeah I had a mother and father that they just like to get in the car and go well where are we going well we don't know well, as a young kid, I'm going, huh? They just like to drive. Mom, mom would have her apples, her golden delicious red apples, uh, and a bag of salty potato chips. That was her go-to. No matter if she was riding in a car or if she was reading a book late at night. They just love to get in a car and go travel. Where are we staying at? Oh, we don't know. We'll stop somewhere. And I can remember, Brother Howard, when I got 16 and I got a job, I was so happy to get that job. You know why? Because I didn't have to go on vacation anymore. Oh, they aggravated me so much. I even had to sleep outside on a tarp because we waited too long to get a room and every, all the rooms were gone. And Mom slept in the back seat of the car. Me and Dad slept out on the ground. And I can remember telling my dad one time, he said something about, about vacation and, and something like that. And I, I looked at him and I said, Dad, I'll never treat my family that way. And he just laughed. He knew what I was talking about. But that's the way they were. I, I, I wasn't that way. And you can ask my wife to this day, if we're going to go somewhere, one of the first things I'm thinking about is where we're going to stay. Has to be in my mind. I can't do this, go here and look and go there and look and go somewhere else and look. And, this, and, and my dad would go stop here at about, we start stopping about 5 o'clock. We wouldn't get something until about 8 or 9. 
And we go one place, and, and he'd look at it, and then, uh, and then we'd go another place, and, uh, and, and he'd check the price there, and he'd come in the car, get in, and we'd take off. And, well, what was it, Dad? Oh, it's getting better. <laughs> Destination. I want to know, where am I going? I want to know, where am I staying? And here, let me tell you this this morning, uh, that's the reason why I have this uh, uh, mindset with him. Uh, I understand uh, that the destination is heaven. Uh, I understand where we're going. He's already told me, uh, I've got a place for you. Uh, Amen. I've got a place that's built for you. Uh, I've got a a beautiful place uh, for all of my people. And I'm like, okay, uh, I understand that. Uh, Now, I'm going to do everything I can do, uh, amen, to make sure I end up there. I can't get to that destiny uh, unless my eyes are on Him. Amen. It's His presence uh, that I've got to get a hold of uh, along the way. uh, And and according to this journey, uh, gaze into His eyes uh, until you make your way to the depths uh, of His love and His compassion. Uh, Amen. God won't turn you away. God's calling us everywhere to take a closer look at what He has to offer. God is calling every day. Unbelievers, unbelievers, take a closer look at him so they might know him and believe. Oh, I'm here to tell you, if you kind of got your, if you're distracted this morning, you need to, you need to get reacquainted with him. Amen. If you, if you got your eyes off of, off of the prize, you need to get your eyes back on him. Amen. Take a closer look at him. It's important. God's calling you. In John 20, the disciples exactly told Thomas how that Jesus had appeared unto them. But Thomas had this idea. He had, except I see the, his hands, the, the, the nails and the prints and his hands and his side. Except I put my finger in, 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 into those holes and thrust my hand inside. He said, I'm not going to believe. And Thomas declared that he would not believe unless he seen the evidence. Everybody say the evidence. And what did Jesus say? Did Jesus say, sorry, Thomas, you just don't have the faith? No. He said this, after eight days, his disciples were within and Thomas went with them. Then came Jesus and the doors being shut, stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, behold my hands, reach hither thy hand, thrust it in my side, and be not faithless, but believing. What was Jesus doing? What was Jesus doing? What was he doing? He was saying, Thomas... I want you to take a closer look. Take a closer look. It's me. It's me. And that's when Thomas stopped for a moment and said, My Lord and my God. Can't say my Lord and my God unless you take a closer look at him and understand who he is. And I'm here to tell you today, in this day and time, all in this moment, on this Sunday morning, amen, that you and I need to stop for just a moment. And we need to open our eyes, amen, and see Him as He really is. Amen. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let me say it again. There is none like Him. I close with this. As I was looking at this and studying this out, a song came to mind. And uh, it's a chorus we used to sing. And, and I'll just read you the verses in the chorus. The title of the song was Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Many of you older folks will know this. It would behoove our younger generation to maybe kind of at least know the lyrics of it. Oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, He promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying 
his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's stand together all over this place. Let me ask you this morning at 12.06 on the 10th day of November 1900 or 2024 looking into the closing of this year if the Lord tarries. Where are you at in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you want to see Him more clearly? As I open these altars this morning, is there anybody that just wants to come and take a closer look? The cross where Jesus died, where His blood was shed, where He breathed His last breath, where He spoke His last words as far as this world is concerned. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look into His wonderful face. Okay, now everybody else on the, in here in the church, wherever you might be, we're all going to join together. Just raise your hands together and let's all pray. Let's just kind of talk to the Lord for a moment. They're going to sing. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come before you knowing we have no power within ourselves, but we can make a decision today to turn our eyes upon you.